To make a drag and drop label question, go to Settings, Question Bank, and in this case I've got a category set up, so I'm going to put it in the right category. And create a new question, and choose drag and drop markers. Put in some question text. And what I usually do is put the question in and then copy it and put it in the question name as well so I know what my question is about. I'm going to put in some additional instructions here. These markers have a little circle attached to them and that's the part that needs to end up inside the hotspot uh, that you create. So um, it'll make sense as I go on. I'm going to leave the default mark for now until I know exactly how many labels I'm putting on. So I need to insert an image. Okay, once it's in, you can see that there's a grid here, and this grid is for me 800 across and about about 500 and a bit down. Um, the default is 600 by 400, but you can change that. Now this is where I put in the names for the different markers. Uh, there are six here by default, um, but when you get to the end, you can add as many as you like, really. Okay, so I've got all those in. Uh, now I refresh the preview, and it's my chance now to make some hotspots. So the first one I'm going to do is for the outside of the year, that's called the pinner. It's, that's kind of a rectangular shape, so I'm going to make a rectangle here. Select a rectangle drop zone, and I need to I need to say where that top left corner of the rectangle is. It's at about 30 or 40 across, and about 50 downish. So type it in, uh, just like coordinates on a graph, going across first on the x-axis and then uh, down on the y-axis. Um, so separate that with commas and then put a semicolon. The next thing I need to do is the width and the height of the box. So it's about 100 wide, about 400 tall. You can see the box gets formed and then I can just adjust these numbers here. I like to be a little bit generous with my the size of my hotspot um, so that there's no um, ambigu ambiguity if someone thinks they were in but really you know they were out. So that one looks pretty good. Next I'll make a circle for the eardrum. I could probably do a rectangle here as well, um, but I'll, I'll do a circle so that I can show you. The circle you define in a different way. You've got to find the center of the circle and then nominate its radius. So we'll find the center, which will be the X and Y coordinates. And then add in the approximate radius of that circle. Okay. Um, and you can see I put it in the wrong spot, so I can just quickly adjust one of my numbers and it jumps back into the right area. That's pretty good, might just make it a little bit bigger. You don't have to stick to going up by tens, you can put any number in. Um, it's just referring to the pixels, so 33 pixels is the radius and that covers the eardrum quite handily. I need another circle for the um, something called the round window, so I'm just going to copy those coordinates and then I can just modify the coordinates as I go to put it in a different place. So move it over. It's too big, so I need to make it a bit smaller and I'm just going to fiddle with these numbers here until I'm happy with it because the, the round window is quite small. Don't want to make it too small because they have to be able to get inside the target area. It's not looking too bad. Okay, and the last type I'm going to show you is um, a polygon. And a polygon, in this case, I'm going to draw a parallelogram. Um, and the way you define one of these is you have to type in all of the points for that polygram. Polygram? Polygon. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to work out where my top left corner is, and I'm going to type it in. Put a semicolon after I've put those coordinates. I won't be able to see anything yet. 
won't be able to see anything until I've got three coordinates there because that's the smallest number of corners you can have to have a, a polygon, three sides. So here we go, just uh, type it in, eyeball the, the uh, coordinates if I'm wrong, um, you know, I, I can go in and change them. I think I've made a mistake here. Oh, that, there's, that's not too bad. That's the first uh, the first three corners. And then as the last corner comes in, uh, you can see I've got a, a parallelogram which covers that tube. And so on, I can just add more and more. Now, this is actually quite a big diagram. I'm putting lots of things into it. Uh, you could do a lot less, but because I'm doing a lot, I'm gonna save my changes halfway through. Uh, because I've been burnt before where I've lost my internet connection uh, or the computer's shut down for some reason or something's gone wrong and I've lost the work I've done putting it together. And this is one of the more time consuming question types. So when you make it, yeah sure you've got it made for a long time but just getting it over the line there is the hard part. So just race through these last few here, I've sped up the video a bit. You can see they've all uh, come in, they're all, it doesn't matter if they overlap. Okay, I've got 11 different things that I'm dropping there, so I'll make it out of, I don't know, five will do. I could put feedback in there, I could put an image with a, of a correctly labeled ear if I wanted to, but I'm just not going to. That there is if you have an adaptive mode set for your tests, I, I never do anyway, and hints and tags I don't use. Save the changes, and you can preview the question, and you'll see here I'll do it, and um, just to quickly pop everything on. And you can see I resized the window then. I'll put this last one in the wrong spot and submit. And I've got 4.55 out of 5. It's not bad. And then you can also go back and edit at any time. Now if you like, you can go and check out some of my other videos. I hope it's been helpful for you.